Thank you so much for coming to um, to Pocket Gamer Connect, and thank you so much for coming for my speech. Uh, <clears throat> today, I will be talking about this extraordinarily boring subject of GDPR compliance, as you may have found out from the program. And thank you for coming. Thank you for staying. If you're leaving, then that's okay. Uh, before I'm gonna uh, begin, I'm gonna ask you guys uh, three questions. Um, that's so cool. I was like, this is, I, I can barely see you all. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm gonna ask you three questions. Can you please raise your hand if you have heard about GDPR compliance? Cool. So almost everyone actually has heard. This is perfect. Last week, I had a webinar and uh, I posted a promo, a video promo on my Facebook profile. And one of my network connections commented, um, what is that? Why do I need it? Why do you need to care? So that is really nice that I have an audience that is more or less um, familiar with the subject. But I have another question. Uh, who here is completely uh, confident that they're compliant and they're ready for the May 20 gifts? Awesome. Oh, one person. Where are you from? I'm uh, on Twitter. Of course you are. Hello, I'm Wolf on Twitter. Um, well, so, and my third question, as I promised, who here feels like they need a popcorn? Okay, I do. <laughs> anyway, before I'm gonna start, start into the uh, subject, I'm gonna introduce myself. My name is Natalie, and uh, wow, there's a gigantic picture of me right there, if you, in case you can see me really well. Uh, I am Chief Operating Officer of Abadil. I'm also a Chief Evangelist of Abadil. That means that I have been working with a group of lawyers on the subject of GDPR compliance, and right now I'm here to uh, tell you all about this. So to make the subject a little bit less boring and a little bit more entertaining, I'm hoping that I will be able to um, in, um, interact with you guys a little bit more. So whenever you feel like you have a question in the middle of the slide, please raise your, raise your hand, and I'm gonna pass the microphone to you and uh, ask a question. Uh, if you don't, that's okay. At the end of the session, we're going to have a Q&A uh, session as well, where you can ask questions that are unrelated to certain slides. So what is GDPR? I'm sure that you're all familiar with this, but GDPR stands for General Data Protection Regulation. It is a set of laws that, um, laws that are designed to protect a personal data of all uh, European citizens no matter where they are in the world, uh, they're in Europe, they're traveling, uh, and no matter uh, which role they are doing right now, they're at work or um, they are just a person who is using an app or any person. A person is a person, no matter who they are in any of their roles. So what is a personal data? Personal data by GDPR is um, any kind of data, any kind of information that is potentially can link uh, this information to a certain person. So this information can include name, date of birth, uh, identification number, social security number, um, social identity, even their group of friends, uh, IP address, device ID, so pretty much any information that makes it possible to track down a specific person anywhere in the world. So, um, who is responsible? Before I'm going to jump into separating the roles here, um, the people or the companies who are incorporated in the uh, United, uh, in European Union, uh, are all should be uh, GDPR compliant. They all must be GDPR compliant. However, even if you are incorporated anywhere else in the world, US, United States, Canada, France, oh, sorry, not France, obviously, <laughs> but uh, Russia, Australia, anywhere, China, but you do work with uh, European companies, so you work with European freelancers uh, or um, <clears throat> employees or even end users, you must be compliant. So anyone in this industry must be compliant because we all want more users and they're all allocated uh, all over the world. So most of them, well not most of them probably, but a good chunk of them are in the European Union. So we should all be compliant. GDPR, to, um, to understand whose fault of a GDPR breach, uh, GDPR laws divide roles for controllers and processors. Who those are, uh, you can see the brief description on the screen, but controllers are basically at the companies who 
um, control the data collection, who define why they need this data and what they need this for, how long they're gonna keep it for, what they're gonna use it for, uh, and so on. They are the people, or they are the, sorry, the companies that developed the product that will be using this data. Who are the processors? The processors, uh, generally speaking, are those that stay in, um, a link closer, a step closer to the end user and collect this data. If we are talking about the end user, uh, the good example of processor would be um, a publisher. So those that actually are the first person who communicates for the end user. If we are talking about uh, a temp, uh, uh, like a freelance, uh, a tab agency would be a good processor. And uh, the employer who employs a temp worker from this temp agency would be a controller. Um, and so on. So any questions on this? Okay, great. So on this slide, uh, it's gonna be clearly explained how in our uh, gaming or uh, ad tech or gaming ecosystem uh, <clears throat> we define controllers and processors. So the, if you just watch this, uh, just watch the slide without any sound, without me explaining it, it looks like um, the black arrows going to, uh, from uh, the advertisers to the end users and request the data and then the arrows uh, in red go back and bring this data. So the ultimate controller would be the guy on the left, right left, uh, who is the advertiser or ad agency. But um, everyone else is uh, merely a processor and is not responsible, which in reality is actually not true because every, uh, each and every of those uh, companies in between, the advertiser and the uh, end user, is the company that has their own product. So they all require a certain information to work. For example, I can speak from Appleview perspective. And although we are processors for many of our partners, we also require information to make our product possible. For example, product that is um, providing a good traffic that is uh, free of fraudulent activity, we need this information to collect this information regardless of where, where this user in the world to make sure that we provide a clean traffic, there is no double clicks, there are no bots, or so on. We need information to provide um, a good and fair price and uh, provide uh, a highest paying ad in a real-time auction to publishers. So we also need to collect this information and, uh, and so on. <coughs> uh, if any questions on this, great. So what happens if uh, we are not compliant? We just don't want to care, it's too much legal paperwork, it's just, it's, it's just who cares? Uh, so under GDPR, we are dealing here with the very, very insignificant um, violations, the minor violations, will cost your company 10 million euros or 2% of the global turnover, whichever the greatest. Or for a serious violation, if you're not compliant at all, you've never heard of GDPR, but you keep collecting the data, will cost you 4% uh, of your global turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is greater. So let's all be compliant. Again, GDPR begins on May 25th, and there is no grace period in between May 25th and to whichever date that you must be compliant. You must be compliant on May 25th. GDPR has been adopted, or accepted, sorry, um, in 2016, so two years ago. So these last two years, actually, that was a grace period. Okay, so I hear, I spent uh, months and months with uh, our lawyers uh, working on the GDPR compliance for Apple deal, and here's the checklist that we've gone through. Uh, you are welcome to take a screenshot or you know, take a picture, but uh, at the end of this, um, at the end of the session, I'm gonna give you a link where you'll be you will be able to download the slides as well. Anyway, we developed a new privacy policy. We listed clearly what we use the data for, which data is being used. We listed clearly who our partners are. Uh, so the end user potentially can track down which data is being uh, tracked or which data has been collected by AppleDeal, which data has been collected by any of those 60 demand partners that we use uh, or whoever else. Uh, consent management. We at AppleDeal do not uh, collect consent ourselves, unlike, mo unlike mobile. Um, we ask our publisher to collect the consent for, um, for us. So what that means is we believe that 
it will not provide the best user experience if uh, every partner of, er of every publisher would request their own consent. If you work with several um, monetization tools, and if you work with several uh, analytic, tool analytic tools, and you let everyone um, request their own consent from the end user uh, before the session begins, it will simply uh, run the risk of spoiling the user experience. So <clears throat> we uh, ask in our publishers, and this is listed in our privacy policy, that they are collecting the consent and sending it to Capodium. The vendor management. What it means is that we went through all of our uh, contracts with uh, our vendors, and uh, we um, made sure that the contracts are GDPR compliant. Well, many of those contracts were signed in 2015, 2016, and uh, last year, and of course there's nothing uh, mentioned in GDPR in there. So we, instead of rewriting the contracts, we are simply sending the addendums to the clients or sorry, to the vendors to just uh, simply make sure that we are compliant. Data processing impact assessment. What it means is that a company, Apple Deal or any, any other company, must uh, keep a list of the products that is using the data, that is collecting and using the data. Uh, so we have uh, a list uh, of all the features that Apple Deal currently provides or currently um, Right, provides that is collecting the data. Even if they were developed in 2016, but we still keep using them, they must be on this uh, record tracking. Mode. And of course, all the future products that will be collecting this data must be uh, kept must be uh, kept in this unified document. <clears throat> we developed a list of internal procedures that allow everybody clearly to see uh, what happens if a data subject or a person requests uh, to uh, delete all the information that we previously collected and look, not collected uh, in the future. So all of that is clearly stated in our internal documentations for internal use. And of course, moving forward, we will be demonstrating our ongoing compliance with GDPR um, in various um, ways. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, do you guys have any questions at all? Please. Feel free to uh, ask me right now, or if you can think of any uh, later, then you can just send me a message. Uh, any insults, any suggestions, please go ahead and send me a um, message. So who's got questions? No, not yet. Hold on. Oh, no, no. Don't take it away yet. Not ready. <laughs> so as promised, there is a link, the bit.ly link on top, that will, we just put all of the collateral on GDPR in one place on Apple website. And uh, just follow the link, bit.ly slash GDPR, and you will find the webinar, the mentioned uh, above uh, mentioned webinar um, recording. You will find several articles. You'll find uh, frequently asked questions and answers to those questions, uh, and so on. Uh, also, if, uh, if you will maybe consider giving me two more minutes of your time and go to the bit.ly link and uh, completing the survey about today's speech, I would be really grateful. It's really simple. There are only a few simple questions. So, questions? Uh, questions. Any hands up on the question side? So I, I, I'll ask one because, so, uh, you know, how big an issue do you think this is going to be for, uh, particularly, you know, in, in the developers? Because my, my impression is it's quite a high burden on uh, the developers to be able to be you know, compliant. Uh, and a lot of them think completely unaware. Do we think that we're going to see, you know, small ninjas being fined 10 million, you know, day one? All right. So I asked the same question to our lawyers. Uh, like, uh, really, how much do should we care? How much should we would be afraid? And the thing is, um, the chance that the government agency will come after you and check if you're GDPR compliant is very slim, but it exists. No matter if you're uh, Apple Deal, or no matter if you're Twitter, or if you're a small indie developer, it still exists, it's still there. Uh, so if you are not completely compliant, if you're not at all compliant, that there is a good chance that they may find you. Uh, how big of this chance? Of course, I cannot answer that. I just simply don't know. But there is a chance. So if you're not compliant right now, I suggest that you at least take a few very, very simple steps, like consent management. You provide the consent to the end users. 
you develop a very simple privacy policy where it lists which information you do collect and keep, if any, and which lists um, the list of your uh, partners that do collect uh, this information, just to protect yourself, just to uh, demonstrate the ongoing GDPR compliance and just to demonstrate your efforts, even if they're very small. I mean, I think this is um, an issue, to, I think, to a certain extent, the, uh, the way that cookies have been uh, an issue for websites, and people have now got a standard response, which actually is beyond what's required, um, but it makes it, for sure, everyone's safe, I suspect, like you said, you know, people updating the privacy policy, being able to, you know, make sure that the, the user sees that early on, is going to be critical to, you know, you know most people. Correct, and just like uh, I think it's last year that uh, EU started requesting the cookie notification pop up on the EU website that this website is using cookies. This is also linked to the same GDPR compliance. And as you know, most people just put a little uh, I agree uh, thing and that's it and they move on. So this is going to be the same with the consent. Uh, just simple, I don't know, like a, a banner or simple, a full screen banner that just says, hey, if you're playing this game, you're gonna, uh, just, just so you know, we collect new information. Yeah. And that's it, and just they click okay. One of my suspicions is something that's been um, developed by people who don't understand the industry trying to model something they don't really understand, but that's me being maybe a bit mean. Uh, there's a question here. Yeah, hi, uh, this is Collier Rice from Bengal. Um, thank you very much for this insight here on GDPR. I have one question. So in theory, GDPR is only a European Union thing. Um, of course, we're all dealing with um, consumers in the European Union, so it doesn't affect us all. Now, the question is, do you feel that um, this will be an isolated European Union issue, or is this something where you, what you are seeing is, well, it's going to spill over to, any, to you, how you deal with consumers worldwide, and not just be limited to EU consumers, because it's just easy to, so while we're adapting to this, we might as well implement it for the whole world. Got it, yeah, that's actually a really good question. There was a, uh, there was a set of laws in the United States released uh, um, not so long ago called Privacy Shield. And it's, uh, it's exactly the same, so designed to protect the, uh, the users, the end users, uh, in terms of which information is being collected. Uh, but it's less strict than GDPR. So if you're GDPR compliant, uh, this is soon, sooner or later, the whole, the rest of the world is gonna catch up. So if you're GDPR compliant, that will make uh, that will make you more compliant for any other country out there that is more or less doing this uh, privacy laws, like uh, privacy shield in the United States. Uh, so I would recommend just to make sure that you have uh, that consent for any of the user in the world, uh, and regardless of their location, just to protect yourself. And um, because sooner sooner or later it is it, it is definitely catching on. That's from my perspective. Uh, we'll probably wrap time, but I'm going to get one last question in here. Thank you so much. Um, we're actually working on the GDPR right now, and then we are not, um, as you said, we're not dealing with the EU users, but it's pretty crazy to think that, for example, like a user, um, EU, like people who leave their travel to some other country when they give like a hotel a passport, which means the hotel has to be GDPR compliant. But I don't think a lot of people are noticing that because, you know, like, uh, so how many like you are dealing with all the partners? How like what's the percentage people actually being a GDPR compliant or like if people are still getting ready or do you think it's like most your partners are really waiting for GDPR? Well, uh, we're not dealing with the hotels, but we are dealing with the advertisement um, with other partners that are in the demand side or the other partners that are on the supply side, like publishers. Uh, so, um, we have received a lot of questions from uh, these partners, so it seems like people are moving into GDPR compliance, uh, more or less, and uh, it looks like a uh, majority is concerned to make sure that they are compliant, uh, if I understand the question correctly. If you're asking about people are traveling all over the world and making sure that other people or other companies, no matter where they are, should be compliant, then I would say that is absolutely correct. Even if you are in a little hotel somewhere in Brazil, uh, you probably will, the chances that you get European citizens will be pretty high. So just uh, simply placing the privacy policy that say, 
hey, by staying in this hotel, we're gonna collect your best of information, uh, name, date of birth, and so on, uh, and gonna keep it for an X period of time for these purposes. Um, then that would be sufficient. But of course, with this set of laws being active now, um, every company that has potential of tracking information that potentially can drag down a specific user, a specific person uh, anywhere in the world should be, of course, compliant. So I think that that's all the time we have. Well, thank you very right. much. Thank you, guys. Sure,